what's going on guys and girls welcome to this episode i've had a lot of people reach out to me asking me what can i expect as a conductor trainee going through bnsf conductor school so guys i'm going to cover some points here and kind of what to expect now every class you go to is not held at some big facility that's typically ran at the uh, terminal that you've hired out at so there are instructors there that are from the company and there's also instructors that come there that are actual conductors at that terminal so with that in mind we're going to cover the kind of ins and outs to give you an idea of the format that you can expect to go through during your conductor school so you're going to have two phases here and I say phases, when I went through conductor school, we did a mix of classroom and OJT. So we started out our conductor school with a couple of weeks of OJT, a manager that was, what was it called? It was like a manager facility training trainer came in and went over more topics in depth of what our conductor instructors there at the depot there at that terminal went through so you're going to have a mix between classroom instruction and ojt so let's talk about classroom instruction guys this is going to be your first wake up call to holy crap there's a lot going on here and what i mean by that is you're going to get thrown a massive learning curve even if you've already worked for another railroad it's still a big learning curve but not near as much for somebody that is coming in and has never had any experience like myself with the railroad. And what I mean by that is you're going to hit the books. And what I mean by that is this, you're going to have to learn the G core, your signals, system, special instructions, hazmat safety, along with the employee, rule book for the company ins and outs. This is where you're also going to start getting your introduction to the union and um, how claims work and things like that. There's going to be a lot of information flying at you. Okay. And so before you go into the field, you're going to be having to learn these and take pre-test and guys, I'm telling you a couple of weeks is not enough to learn these massive pieces of information like it's it's a lot you're i i think it was like day four we started getting to air brake and train handling and going over air brakes and air test and i went home and i told my wife it's like i don't know what i got myself into like this is a complete opposite of anything i've ever done before so guys i ha I, I can't stress this enough study 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 there's a lot of information coming your way and it's your res your responsibility to uh you know disseminate and absorb this information so during classroom training you are going to be taken out usually into the yard or training facility to have your first introductions to working around equipment how to safe safely work around equipment hooking and unhooking air hoses changing knuckles uh linking and unlinking equipment um and so many different things how to get on and off cars how to ride cars and engines um a lot of information here so guys i can't stress this enough ask questions pay attention watch what you're doing and work safely and learn how to work safely Again, guys, this is your first introduction on how to work safely before you go out into the field and not get yourself killed as a student, much less go get yourself killed after you get out of class. All right. So ask questions, learn how to safely work. This is your first chance to actually get in here and start doing that. Now, after you clear some classroom instruction, you're going to start your OJT. OJT is your on-the-job training. Now, I've had some students come with me um, before in the past. And, guys, I got to tell you, 
make sure you have your gear. And what I mean by your gear, gloves, rain gear, switch keys, radio, lantern, your iPad or rule book. I can't count how many people I've ran into that left their switch keys at home, left their radio or had a dead battery. Guys, come prepared to work just because you're a student doesn't mean you get to be stupid and lazy. Okay, come prepared to learn, come pre prepared to work. Can't stress that enough. So you're going to spend some time multiple weeks out in, in the field doing yard jobs, locals, road switchers. You're going to be going on road runs. You're going to start seeing the territory. Um, you're really going to get to see where a lot of this classroom information is coming into play. Around this time, you're probably going to start feeling a little bit overwhelmed. That's okay. It happens to all of us. It's a lot of information to come in. You're going to be doing a lot of runs very, very quickly. It's part of the gig, guys. So if around this time you're saying, hey, this railroading thing's not for you, it may not be for you. This job is not for everyone. That's all I got to say about that, and neither is the training. So I'm going to give you guys five tips to help you with your OJT, okay? So if, number five, mouth shut, ears and eyes open. What I mean by that, I'm not saying sit in the third man seat and be a bump on a log, okay? What I am saying is do not get up in that engine and go, I know, I know, I know. Nobody cares what you know, what they care is about getting workable, real information and things you need to know into your head. And if you're already spouting off, I know this, I know this, I know this, you're not absorbing anything. And honestly, that's one of the quickest way to piss off your train crew that you're going to be working with. Avoid the words I know, even if you already know it 100%, and just listen to what these guys have to say. Number four. No one cares you worked for a railroad or a short line before coming over to BNSF as a conductor trainee. Okay, what people care about is teaching you how to be a railroader for BNSF with our rules and the way the company does things. So you don't get fired, you don't get somebody else fired, and you also don't get you or anybody else killed. There's a lot of differences between working for BNSF and what somebody at NS or UP or CSX can do, much less the short line railroads. Okay. Nobody gives a shit how much of a railroad god you think you are. It doesn't matter. So, guys, don't brag about that. Nobody really cares. And if you come in with that attitude, I guarantee you, I watched a guy come over from NS and get off a piece of moving equipment because he could do that at NS, he said. But that's a deadly here at BNSF. And guess what? The guy was caught on camera, and he was terminated. That's all there is to it, guys. So keep that in mind. Keep a good attitude and environment in the cab of that motor, and just keep that one to yourself. Nobody cares. Number three. Be a part of the crew. What I mean by this is don't be a bump on the log and refuse to get up in that front conductor seat, get a hold of there, ask questions. You know, if your conductor gets down and is going and working, you need to get off your butt and go and work with him. Now, if he's doing something you're not comfortable with, let's say riding a shove or something like that, or let's say the weather conditions are pretty dicey and you're just not comfortable riding that shove in just yet because you don't have the experience, that's okay. Speak up and say, hey, can you either teach me how to do this safely or it's also okay to say, hey, man, I'm not comfortable doing that yet. What else can I do? Guys, if you approach situations like that, people will invite you to be a part of the crew. If you're asking questions and being engaged, People are going to take the extra time to go the, the extra distance to teach you what you need to know. I can't stress that enough. You can get so much more out of your OJT if you make an effort to be a part of the crew and not to be, you know, just a bump on the log and just meh. So be a part of the crew. 
number two, kind of, I've hinted at this several times already, but it's a huge thing. Guys, ask questions. You know, if you don't understand something in the timetables and your conductor engineer is asking you something, say, hey, can you explain this to me? I'm not getting this. It's not making sense. Or, hey, what's this signal mean? I'm still not 100% sure. Like, I know the definition, but I'm not 100% sure how this actually plays into out here in the real world. Or I don't understand what parts of this track warrant mean. Guys, ask questions. Don't be afraid to say, I don't know. Okay? So you get what you put into this. And if you don't ask questions, don't expect a whole lot of information. These guys aren't going to, you know, dig it out of you. If you don't want to be a part of the crew and ask questions, these guys aren't going to force it out of you. So you get what you put into it. Number one advice, study, study, study. Guys, one thing I did when I was out there on the train during OJT, during the trip, I'm taking notes of what my conductor and engineer are telling me. Now, it's a lot of information, but if they're saying, hey, with this rule in this situation, it applies here, I write down that rule. So if I have some downtime or once I get to the hotel, I go and actually look up that rule. So, guys, always be studying, always be reinforcing your information. And the best way to reinforce that is to study the rules and information that's passed down to you by these conductors and engineers. So, guys, those are my tips and kind of what to expect. If you completed OJT, you will be having to take a series of tests. Okay. One of them is typically a practical test, like linking up an air hose, changing a knuckle. Um, you know, working in between pieces of equipment, there's several different things you got to know that are commonplace in every day and you got to know how to do them correctly, or you could get yourself hurt or even jeopardize your job. Neither one of those things we want to happen. Now, on top of that, it's very important to also be ready for your written test. You're going to have a signals test that you have to pass with a hundred percent. And I don't remember what the pass percentage is on the big written test, but that one covers G core air brake train handling, SSI employee safety hazmat, all the information you've been learning. If you haven't been studying up to this point, you're going to be in big trouble. So guys, that's my little rundown of OJT. Don't forget to like, and subscribe down below and help, support this channel and get the word out there. Really appreciate you guys taking the time to check out this video. I hope it helps. Leave me a com comment down below and we'll catch you guys on the next round. Y'all have a good one. Thank you.